Hey, how you doing? It's Andrew Cartwright, and uh, we're going to talk today about selling, selling your house, listing it. As you've probably heard, it's kind of weird to say list, right? But you're actually listing it. Listing it typically means putting it in the multiple listing service. It's kind of where the the name came from. Uh, to give you a little background on me as far as selling, um, I actually produced, um, I wrote a plan when I was 18 years old on how to sell your house by yourself. And I wrote that business plan and it wasn't until 2003 that I actually produced a magazine for five years helping people sell their own home by themselves. So I really acted like a coach um, helping people sell their own homes uh, without the use of a broker, which is weird because I'm a broker, right? I'm a real estate and business broker. Um, I've also built homes to sell and bolt, built custom, um, custom homes as well as industrial projects. So full gamut from actually operating as a broker and also coaching people through the sell it yourself um, process. I published a magazine called Property Sold by Owner from 2003 to 2008. Um, and that magazine was a very, it was really interesting to learn about that and to spend five years, not just a blanket, most, most brokers will call or agents will call um, people to get them to list their house when they're selling it themselves. So I'll talk a little bit about that, what it's like to sell your own home. Um, uh, I'll talk a little bit about commissions, um, which is weird. Um, most brokers, agents don't talk about commissions because when a client brings up commissions, it's safer to, um, at that point, if you're driving in the car down the road, it's probably safer to jump out of the car than it is to answer the questions about commissions. So I'll go a little bit into that. Um, one of the things is because we have uh, antitrust laws about uh, commissions, and I'll go into that a little bit too. So in this, in what we're going to talk about is how to list and sell your home and some common tips that will help you do it efficiently um, from somebody who's been on pretty much all sides um, as selling, as representing sellers, as buyers, and also through the for sale by owner process so that I can talk a little bit, give you a little bit of light into that. Um, and I'll do a separate video that will be just for sale by owner and that's it uh, so that you get the full gamut of selling your own home. Uh, from a professional broker, which is really odd, right? So first of all, I want to talk about selling your house, what you really need to know. One of the things is you want to look at what model did you buy. If you bought, and most people buy in track home communities, um, I'll have another custom home uh, segment that we'll do. But I'm just going to talk about the average American home, which is typically a track home where, you know, you have four or five models in a subdivision. So a builder, a build out, maybe 10 or 20, 30 acres of land and they will cookie cutter architectural plans and typically they'll take the plans and they'll flip them four different ways to give you four different versions of a house. So basically you've got sort of the developer's idea what they think a good house should look like and then they modify the rooms, they'll add a room, change it to a den, that sort of thing. But every developer has models that they sell more than any of the other models. So if you're buying a new home, make sure you ask, what is your most popular home model? And why do people pick that one? Well, what, because you really want to know. When you buy a house, even though you're buying it for yourself, chances are you're not going to live there forever. You're going to up, you're going to buy a bigger home. Maybe you downsize. Maybe you're in a relationship that, um, you know, God forbid that you break up. Things change, right, in life. You get a different job in another state, and maybe you don't want to keep it as a rental and deal with the hassle. So you really want to be thinking, I know it's kind of weird, when you're actually uh, selling your home, you got to think like a buyer. So that, that is when people look at to buy, what are going to be the features that they're going to want that are the most popular? So look at your model. When you're getting ready to list your home, take a look at the model. You can get comps from a broker. A lot of times you can get them before you actually list with somebody, you can ask for some data, and you can ask for the houses that are listed and for sale, right? I mean, listed for sale and ones that have sold. And then you can look at basically the models, if you look at the square footage, the square footage for your particular model will typically be the same all the way through the neighborhood. Very rarely do they have more square footage because if you change those architectural plans, it costs you money. 
So that's why you typically have four different homes that they use over and over again because the more times they can use that, like when I develop a house, it could be a hundred to four hundred thousand dollars for architectural plans, right? Like six dollars a square foot or ten dollars a square foot just to design the architectural. So in a model home, they take those plans and they stretch them out as far as they can because the more times they use that model, the cheaper those plans come based on the house. So the square footage will pretty much be the same. So look for the square footage, look at on the comps what's been sold, how much they asked, and if they're getting what they're asked for. So a lot of times people will ask a price that they're never gonna get, and that's gonna keep your home on the market longer because it's selling at a certain price. So look at what they listed it for, look at what it sold for. If there's a variance of 20 to $30,000 that you may not get, because an appraiser is not gonna appraise it for much more because you don't have the unique quality that says that your house is worth that much more, then all you're doing by being $20,000 more than the market is basically stalling the potential of your home going before the one down the street that's $20,000 cheaper. Now the value of your home is your decision. No broker, no agent should really be making a value decision. Honestly, all they should do is give you the comparable sales. Like, what is it done? That's a market approach, right? What's the market actually trading for at that price? So I'm not here to give you a value opinion. I mean, obviously, you should hire a professional or hire me if you want to, um, or you should get legal advice as far as any of that aspect, just to play it safe. Um, the value of your house is really in your corner. Nobody should really tell you what the value of your house is. That's something that you should decide. But I wanna give you some, a matrix, I'm saying that only as like a disclaimer, but really look at what it's sell, sold for and really kind of figure out is it unique, is the market going up or down, like we've had a downtrend over this last month, um, quite a bit actually, I think almost 25% difference. Um, so we've really come down, so the sales volume isn't there as much, even though you, know, you wanna look also at the absorption rate, that's, you'll see that under days on market. You'll see DOM on that comp, and that means days on market. So you look at that and you go, okay, so if it's 15 days on market, that's a pretty hot market. If it is 30 days, that's still good. If you get 90 to 180 days or even pushed out, that's when you need to start really taking a look at what's in the neighborhood, what are you competing with? Because every segment has what's called an absorption rate. That's how many houses will turn, how fast based on a number of days. And if you're that house that you're just a little bit unreasonable constantly, and the house sells, in, you have a house that sells in front of you because your particular model in the subdivision, there's 300 of them, and you're just unreasonable enough on a consistent basis that you just keep missing that. Because the only variance to your home may be the paint colors, the carpet could be fixable items where another broker agent has said, you know, uh, we could just change those. It's, you don't need to spend $20,000 more. You can spend $3,000 and get that flooring done any way you want. And they're doing their job in kind of giving you options. And you sit there longer trying to sell your home. And that gap of no action and no conversation from your agent um, Typically, people get concerned that something's not happening in their house. Usually, you can debug it. The other thing is you, I wouldn't count so much on your agent to be completely up to speed. I would ask the agent to put you on a auto feeder, uh, if let's say you get listed, that will tell you what's coming, what's being listed and what's being sold in your particular area. That way, you're kept up to loop um, I do it on my own stuff when I'm listing something. I'll basically have a feed so I know what's coming up as a listing in that subdivision or what's being sold. So I can analyze and see what do we need to do to make sure that we sell this house for the most money possible. That's what I'm trying to do for, for an agent. So you wanna look at the, mo the model, you wanna look at um, days on market. The other thing is lot size. Um, what's unique about your house? A lot of times one of the biggest obvious uh, distinction and a lot of times people, you may have bought it and not even known that you got a house that actually had a lot premium when they, when they bought it from the developer. 
and your lot may be twice as big as your neighbor's. So now you've got to break out. What's the value of that extra uh, square footage that you have for landscaping or to put in a pool? A lot, a lot of houses in Vegas, um, a lot of houses all around now have smaller footprints and don't have the ability to put a pool or decent landscaping. Maybe you want to put a gazebo in the back. Um, maybe you want to put a hot tub back there. So, you know, when people are looking to buy, um, if your house has that extra lot, you know, that's something that really needs to be detailed in the description. Your unique market proposition based on your house. Even though you have the same blueprints typically and same model, um, your actual lot can be quite different. Do you have a view? Like um, one of the houses I had had an incredible view from, that looked into a neighborhood. And, it was, and in the backdrop was Las Vegas. So it was really neat to see that view. It had a big lot. It was up high, so it had privacy. And all the houses were down below that we would look out to, and it had a view fence. So here we've got this nice little quaint neighborhood, you know, people riding their bikes and everything. We've got the view fence. And we're sitting out there, and it was a big grassy lot that ultimately I put a pool in and a hot tub. And now you could go and hang out in the pool. You had the view fence. And it, it really felt expansive because of the view fence and because you were up high and the neighborhood, neighbors were low. Now, that was a very unique lot. The house next to me, the house the, on the other side, neither of those houses had that unique perspective of opening up this vast area. So even though basically it wasn't a huge lot, it felt really huge by the view fence and how how big it was. So that was something that it was important when, when selling the house to make sure that we showed that, that view so that when you went out in the backyard, you feel like you're in this big area, even though you're in a small lot. So it wasn't lot size that was bigger, but there was a unique feature um, in building customs. One of the things that in, we're building customs, if we had the view of the strip, they used to call that the million dollar view. Um, I don't know what you'd equate today we haven't really you don't hear that number anymore but usually if you had a view of the strip you could tack on another million dollars to your plan which doesn't cost you any more in architectural doesn't cost you any more in wood sheetrock wiring or plumbing just simply where you positioned your lot would be worth a million dollars more right so it was a, it was a big thing so you know your home better than your agent or broker that comes in. Now they're coming in, they have a unique set of skills um, that we're, we have to, and then we have practice, um, that, that we practice every deal we get better, but your unique home is yours. You spend the time with your broker or agent and explain all the things that you love about your house, what you like about it, what, you know, what nuances make your life more functional or better as a result of that house? Are you closer to a school um, that's across the street? Are you in a neighborhood that um, there's not a lot of cars that drive by? It's a real low traffic. Are you back in a cul-de-sac? Really sit there with your agent and talk about what's positive about the experience of where you're living because they're gonna be able to write that in the public description. And when they talk to somebody, if you gear them up to sell, if you load your agent with a, a, a set of bullets that are gonna be bullet points that they can tell another agent that's gonna tell a buyer all the unique differences, that could be the little thing that actually pushes that buyer to buy your home. It's unbelievable what little tiny nuances, just a little bit of a conversation, can change the whole dynamic where they're looking at your house. Because most buyers, they look at like five or 10 homes. They don't run all over the place. Typically, they're in a mad rush. They've just decided. They're just coming. They want it now. And it could be that one little nuance that gets them to go look at your house um, just from a description. And again, people are looking online today. So they'll go to realtor.com. They'll go to Zillow. They'll see these things. And the description that comes up in that public description you can literally communicate with people all over the world about your particular home. And that description basically um, can draw them in, right? 
So you actually have tremendous power today with technology to be able to actually reach buyers. So that description, you really want to think from a buyer's perspective about the quality of your life as a result of living in this house so that you make it personal, right? So that's an important thing. Um, I'll go into selling it yourself um, in another program, which is uh, for sale by owner, but I want uh, just briefly on that. In five years of you know, helping people sell their own homes, giving them their, their contracts, introducing them to the escrow agent, and taking care of people, and helping them advertise, I did so much work to try and help people because I really thought that you could break this whole cycle and go directly between two people and sell a home. What I found 90% of the time was, almost 100% of the time, was that the buyers automatically discounted the commission from the price, right? And I'm not talking half the commission, um, I'm talking all the commission. So right away they're coming in with an offer where they think it should be 6% less. Because a buyer and seller typically, and we talk about this in agency, are adversaries. Right? You, you know, a buyer wants to pay as little as possible for their survival. A seller wants to sell it for as much as possible for their survival. And then you have all these nuances. There's so many things as far as inspections, roof inspections, legal, title, all that stuff to walk through um, that you have hazards selling yourself that, a, a, you know, a, a, let's say you're going to go to an escrow agent they're not there to give you advice or advise you on the real estate transaction. They're simply there to ensure title and handle that transaction. Make sure the title's clean, that the bank gets a clean title and they get a mortgage against the property. And the title that they represented is the title that you actually bought and they ensure that. So really guiding you through the whole process of the buying and selling takes lots of different talents from being able to pull the sales comps, from figuring out what the market is, talking to lots of people, being in the conversation about real estate, what's happening in different uh, sub-markets, what's helping to sell, what's getting people to buy. Those are all things that basically an, an agent, uh, agent does. As far as setting your price, um, this is a very personal decision. It's up to you as far as the price goes. Um, I've had people that wanted really high, uh, really high price, 15, 20% more in a subdivision. And I stood behind that and I stayed solid all the way through. And even when they wanted to lower the price, I felt that we had the type of house that we could get that. And we pushed it and we actually sold it and created a whole new comp for the, the market and basically pushed the houses in that subdivision up as far as prices. Because now an appraiser could look, well, somebody else bought and actually got a mortgage and actually bought this house for this price. So this model now, there's a new, new standard set as far as value. And that's how the market side of it, because there's three different approaches. What you can rent a house for income would be, um, what it costs to actually build the house, and then a market price, what somebody's willing to pay for it. And those are three different approaches that um, basically appraisers look at. Um, if, I rent, if they look at the rent, what people are getting for rent, and what mortgage that would service if an investor had it, what kind of return that would be, they get an income approach. Um, and those three are how they stabilize the value. The big, huge problem that we had in 2008 was income was here, right? Cost to build was here because I was building and selling homes and the market was here. It made no sense, right? because you could build it for a lot less. The income approach didn't support the value if you were trying to rent it out. It's just people were willing to pay anything for a house. Um, and they were typically only paying interest on the loan. They weren't amortizing the loan. Um, or they were even paying a negative AM, which was every time they made a payment, it was actually going backwards. They ended up owing more money. So um, there were a lot of weird loans that created this virtual market that didn't really exist. People were willing to do that because they want what they wanted. <coughs> um, repairs. How far should you go? I would say don't rebuild your home. Don't repaint it. I mean, if you have areas that, you, you know, you, that have marks on the wall and everything like that, take care of those things. Um, 
if there's a asher agent, is there a smell in the house? Some people have distinctive smells and because they're always in their own environment, they don't even notice their own personal smell. Um, you want to get that out of your house, um, whether that's through fresheners, through carpet cleaners. You want to create a very inviting olfactor smell when people come in. Um, an inviting smell, a comforting smell, and part of that is getting, you know, clean the carpets, right? Clean the walls. Take down all your personal items as far as um, any pictures you have, <coughs> excuse me, any items that personalize the house to you. Because when people are buying, what we found is that if they feel like it's somebody else's house, they don't literally want to take somebody else's house. It's a weird feeling, but they want to see themselves in the house, not you. So take down any personal pictures that you have, put up very bland stuff, um, less is more. Um, if you can clear the clutter out of an area, put it in the, gr the garage, put it wherever, just get it out of the uh, environment. Uh, simple is better. Spaces look much bigger when they're not cluttered too. Um, you want to open up your spaces so that it doesn't feel um, like there's a lot of things. If you have big furniture and a lot of furniture in a room, take some of that furniture out of the room so that you really open up that room. Um, if you don't have any pillows that add splashes of color, throw a little bit of color in the room. And then and you could do that with you know, pillows, maybe a, a cheap $20 carpet that, that is brand new that they see. Um, derotorize your house, uh, carpet clean it, make sure your carpets are clean. The other thing is if it's really bad, um, if you've been smoking or there are e even layers, I restored a lot of homes you can get an ozone machine, literally, and have somebody come in and that goes into all the crevices of everything in the house and actually starts to break down the actual smells and particles, this ozone layer. Literally, you can't be in the house when this is going on because it'll kill you, but basically it breaks everything down in the house. Um, again, talk to a professional about doing that. Don't just go buy an ozone machine and, and mess up your house uh, as far because it affects certain items differently. So you want to make sure that you hire a professional to do that. A lot of restoration companies, I used to do um, fire restoration in a construction company um, and we'd go out and mediate water and then repair homes and we used the ozone layer to get rid of the smoke smell that would be in the lumber, would be in the attic. So we'd bring this ozone machine in and it would literally go into all the, all the orifices and it would break down that smell so that you didn't have a fire smell. And that's how we were able to get the fire smell out of a house that let's say one room burnt down and we were gonna repair it. So just some inside knowledge, random that I would have it, right? Um, being in so many areas of real estate, um, you learn about a lot of different things. So don't repair your house like it's brand new, just the obvious stuff. I wouldn't repaint in a color. Uh, stay away, try and be as general as possible. Um, buyers need to see what they would wanna, want to put there. So if you put a new coat of purple paint on and they're adverse to purple, you didn't do yourself a favor. If it definitely needs painting, uh, I would go with as vanilla as possible with just a few accent pictures to make it look nice, to kind of dress up the area. But I wouldn't commit to a full color on walls. The other thing is when you look at offers, have your agent really go through the offers one by one with you. Let's say you've got an offer from a buyer after you've listed the house. Now you want to go through that offer detail for detail. Do they have the money for the down payment? Um, do they really appear to be qualified if you've got multiple offers? What are the differences between the offers? And you know, if you have the option, uh, you get multiple offers, you can have multiple, depending, and this is again through your agent or broker you want to talk to, you can send out multiple, you know, basically um, responses to those offers. You can do counter offers um, that basically, you know, everybody needs to submit their highest and best. Hopefully you'll be able to squeeze some more out of the deal. But and if it's all contingent on appraisal, your appraiser is going to basically determine the price anyway, and that's going to be based on the market. So pick your strongest offer at that point. 
Um, even if it's for less money, if it's contingent on an appraisal, it'll probably end up at the same number anyway, which is another trick in the business. And then conditions. Look at the conditions of that offer, right? Like, what conditions do you have to meet contingency-wise in order to get through that offer? And are they, a lot of times, uh, agents will miss really about how you've got to contribute money um, towards your loan. And that's another thing that you need to be concerned about. So all this stuff, you want to really consult with, with your professional and sit with. This is just overreaching. Um, so you want to really check in your particular market with your agents, your brokers, or an attorney to make sure that you're getting the best advice possible. My thing is I would always go with a professional. And the other thing is there are different things that I think you need to know about uh, professionals. To me, your level of commitment towards committing to a professional is going to hopefully be um, what you're looking for is somebody to commit back to you uh, with that same level of commitment. So find the person that you really want to work with that you really like, commit to them and make sure they commit to you um, at 100%. A lot of people will um, you know, grab uh, anybody randomly and you, know, you want to look at how many listings do they, are they going to pay attention to your house? Or do they care about you even selling it? Is it going to make a difference in their life that they, do they need to sell your home? Which is pretty important. The other thing, if they need to sell your home, that they don't talk you out of money that you could get. So that's another thing. As far as commissions, commissions are completely negotiable. Um, you can do everything from paying uh, to just list it on the MLS to 1% listing to whatever. Uh, they're completely um, not fixed. The difference is, you know, how much is some, somebody's time and their mind worth to work for something. Um, if you get a really low commission uh, for some and you don't put a commission out there, um, how, how attractive is that going to be for somebody to work on that? I don't know. Um, maybe some people don't really care. Uh, maybe some people do care. This is probably one of the most touchy subjects in real estate. And no one can really tell you that there is a fixed price as far as what commissions are. Um, there's only what people feel is their fair exchange for their time and their energy to do something. So whenever anybody tells you that there is a fixed price, that, that is not true. Um, there's just, you know, profit is a small price to pay for efficiency. So a lot of times, I mean, in every market, if you want something to move, you've got to give incentive for people to actually move it. So if you offer no real incentive, you probably get less and less motivation coming from the person that is trying to help you achieve the goal that you have. Um, and I've seen, you know, people will discount um, the, the price based on the fact that they think that, that you're actually paying less. And if your incentive is less for an agent, maybe the agent doesn't do as much as he should do. Although we have a code of ethics, you're supposed to do a certain amount of professional conduct uh, when you represent a house. So just to cover real quickly, look at your model, check out the days on the market, look at your lot size and your unique offering. Um, also selling yourself, um, you can do it. I, um, I haven't really seen it pan out for a lot of people in, in a very positive way. There's a lot of risk involved. Um, there's other ways probably to go. Price, again, that's your decision, how much repairs, you decide uh, how much you want to put into it, but I wouldn't go overboard on repairs. Just disclose everything that's wrong with the house. Just be straight up front. Um, and buyers, take a real careful look at the buyers and make sure their offers are really solid, that it's an offer you want to take, and that there's no weird conditions, and that you really ask for a net sheet so you can see your bottom line after everything is done. So hopefully this will help you in, in listing your house. I know this is a ton of information. But this information, I hope, will help you um, work with your agent, your broker, or by yourself and be able to look um, at how to sell your house. Um, and now is a great time, I think, to sell a home. Nobody can tell the future. But the reality is we're pretty high in this market and uh, we have four rate hikes. So the less people can afford to pay for a house, um, oftentimes put pressure to bring homes down. So if you're thinking about getting out of your house, now is probably the time. Nobody can tell you absolutely. They'd be lying, 
So I'm not going to tell you absolutely because nobody can predict micro market cycles. Otherwise, they'd probably be a trillionaire. Um, you decide when you want to sell it and at what time. And I hope you pick the right time. I hope this helps. Um, that's the purpose of putting this together. I hope is to help you. And to sell your own home and how to look at it, your models and difference and conditions and getting offers because it can seem really confusing. The other thing I want to say is thank you so much for watching and um, hope that I can give you more content um, and that this helps you and you enjoy watching it. I'm Andrew Cartwright and thanks again. Oh, and also if you want, it would be great if you subscribed. Thank you.